Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My name is Father James Beers, and I'm the pastor here at the Catholic Community of La Blake Croach, as we begin the Tritium with Holy Thursday, and the Good Friday and Easter Vigil, um, as you're tuning in. And maybe some of you are saying, just like from the Christmas uh, little story, the Grinch that stole Christmas. This COVID-19 has stolen my Easter. Well, maybe it is an opportunity right now for us to be more con con contemplative and as we're coming in with families, the day, as I mentioned, might wash the feet of one another and reminding us this is Passover. And so within our places of shelter, passing over the angel of death and Christ is the one who brings us victory over death. Let us now call to mind our sins and times, dear Lord, we've failed to worship you. We've failed to come before you, Jesus, as sinners seeking redemption, as we ask now for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We pray.
O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son went about to hand in himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from us so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lentil of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you shall eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in a flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus I will strike the land of Egypt. No destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
peace of communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel, tied it around his waist, then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, 
you should do also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And so we begin the Tritium. And we remind ourselves on this day, the holy, the holy three days we are entering into, of what this means to us as Catholic Christians. That each of these days has a particular meaning for us. And today we celebrate Holy Thursday, Passover, which we have the institution of the priesthood, the one who offers sacrifice. Jesus is the great high priest. And the priest only for myself, persona Christi, Christ working through me, acting through me, and my life, and my brother priest all over our diocese and around the world who are celebrating right now, Holy Thursday, that their lives are trying to be more and more conformed to Christ, to dying to ourselves and rising to our new selves. And with that, we also have the institution of the Eucharist, Christ's body and blood, soul and divinity, this evening. And as I mentioned at the very beginning of Mass, normally there will be a lot of uh, pomp and circumstance uh, at this particular liturgy, but because of what we are in right now, and we are in Passover, and so the angel of death, this COVID-19, to pass over our households. But we enter now into this mystery of this, uh, this evening, of the institution of the priesthood and the institution as well of uh, the Eucharist, Christ's body and blood. And we see within these three readings the laying out of the Passover meal. Uh, and with each Passover meal, we see uh, that we have five steps to the Passover meal. The first step is we need an unblemished lamb. Unblemished means no defects. It is as best we have a perfect lamb. And the second step is we slaughter that lamb. We prepare it. Third step is we take the blood and we put it outside the door. The fourth step is we eat the lamb. And the fifth step is remember. Remember. Again, Remember has a very strong biblical meaning, not just, okay, remember, you know, this or that. No, this is remembering who we are, our greatest identity. Remember that deepness of the Israelites. Who were they? They were God's chosen people. With Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, that covenant that was made, I will be your God, you will be my people. And so this meal uh, that the in the Old Testament that they celebrated, reminded them more so than ever that with God's strong right hand, he brought us out of slavery in the land of Egypt and through the waters of uh, the Red Sea, as St. Peter would say, they were washed in baptism. And to the other side, freedom, as they entered in and began that journey into the land of milk and honey, the promised land that God had given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so this meal unites God's people as one. And that meal continues to remind them uh, each year when they celebrated, who is God? Who are we? What are we all about? What are we called to be uh, as God's people? And how do we act and behave as God's people? And so that great meaning that message, we are no longer slaves. We are free people, we are God's people. And then we go into our second reading from Paul to the Corinthians. And here is the new Passover for us, the new Israel. And if you remember the Corinthians, uh, they are a very divided and fickle people. They're very divided. And even in the meal, uh, the agape meal, the love meal, uh, some were bringing food, and others couldn't provide food for themselves, but people were eating in front of one another in, in that sense. And Paul says, really, here you are coming together to celebrate Eucharist. Eucharist meaning thanksgiving. And this is how you behave around one another. And so he reminds them that the Eucharist is meant for unity, oneness, wholeness, reminding who we are as Christians as God's people, the new Israel. And so he reminds them, this is what I receive, I now pass on to you. Tradition, tradition, dun, 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 dun. 
tradition. So here's the tradition Paul has received, and now he's reminding this community through his letter, remember who you are. And so the five steps we have once more. Jesus, he is the unblemished lamb. He is the new Adam um, who is took or taken. And then we have second, we have the sacrifice, the slaughter, broke it. Then we have third, apply the blood, what? To the wood of the cross. Apply the blood, Christ's blood that poured out for us on the wood. Fourth, you shall eat it. Eat, eat the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And number five, do this as you heard in remembrance of me. Remember, do as you do this, all that I said, all that I taught, all that I did. This is the memory of Holy Mother Church of 2,000 years now that we celebrate in the Catholic Catechism, that oral tradition uh, that was written down, as well as that written tradition, the sacred scriptures, both of these hand in hand as we come forth as God's people for these last 2,000 years. We remember what we have heard, what has been spoken, St. Paul tells the church, remember that. And so now we go into the gospel, and here is Christ, our, now our Passover here in the 21st century, how we are still celebrating the Passover, remembering the cycle of the Christian life, our lives together. And we have here in uh, John's gospel, uh, we don't necessarily have a Passover meal. We have the beginning. As John says, this is a Passover meal. Um, as they were celebrating, Jesus at one point takes off his garb and he washes the feet. He washes the feet of his apostles. Even Judas Iscariot, the one who will betray him, has his feet washed as well. Uh, again, we should not give up on one another. All of us want to be exiting out of Egypt. All of us should have that for our brothers and sisters as we reach out to them and pray for them during this time and all times that we want people to move away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. That means an exodus. Where is your Egypt? What has been your Egypt for these 40 days that through our Latin practices that we have been trying to let go and not allow it to have a hold on us, that we're not a slave uh, to these various things maybe we have uh, either let go uh, in our lives these last 40 days, and hopefully you've done a good job at that. Has it been tough? I'm sure, yeah, some of you have been going bonkers, not only because you're in the shelter right now, but maybe things that you found comfort in uh, that you've let go for these 40 days uh, has caused you more agitation, and so more reason for celebration as well. Uh, with God, all things are possible. And so we have our exiting out of Egypt. Uh, we've been uh, taking part in that liberation experience. And so we have the cycle again of the five steps. The five steps. First, we come, we, we become the unblemished lamb. I'm hoping that all of you, as many of you here who are watching, have taken time to go to confession, uh, to wash yourself clean, in that second baptism that we call confession or reconciliation or penance, and that you've shared your conscience, you've cleaned your conscience as you've been preparing yourself for this Easter celebration. We will in two more days. Second, our life is a sacrifice. And so we are living out now the life of God, uh, an oblation. Our life is a sacrifice. So how have you been offering yourself to your wife, to your husband, to your kids, to mom and dad, maybe to your neighbors? You've had many various opportunities or just in prayer, rosary, chaplet, reading scripture, just taking time to be still and silent and know that I am God in our lives. Three, uh, the blood poured out. And so our lives, uh, we bear the cross. We're being poured out. Uh, uh, for one another. In the good times and in the bad times, uh, we are pouring our life out. Fourth, we are to be eaten. Remember in Matthew chapter 14, as they asked Jesus, when this loud, large crowd came, how will we feed them all? And Jesus said, you feed them. With what? With ourselves. 
We feed them with our good, good experiences and our bad experiences as well, our strengths and our weaknesses. Uh, Paul says, you know, again, through his weaknesses that he has become strong. For us as well, how many people can we witness to of our lives? We all have a story out there. It's not just fathers, not just sisters, not just religious brother or the catechist. All of us, all of us have a story that we can share of where we were in sin, where we were in darkness, where we were in the shadows, where we are down on our luck. And by the grace of God, you know, we had that moment of inspiration, that friend, that family member, that book, uh, that prayer experience, whatever it may have been, it could have been a crucial. Uh, for I know, or a church that some of you maybe have experienced, or other kind of retreats, and you encountered Christ. You encountered Christ. And so we are called now to be eaten. Share your lives. Don't hold back. Somebody needs to hear your story. It might be that son or daughter that needs to hear your story, or that friend that needs to hear what you went through and how you went from that Egypt experience to that moment of freedom, that time of freedom, in which you're now maybe hopefully still enjoying. And lastly, we are called, we are to remember. Remember who you are. You are salt and you are light for the world. And we're called and mission to be disciples. And so we repeat that cycle after cycle, remembering who we are each Sunday or maybe daily mass. Uh, that we go to. I know right now we can't do that uh, as we are, the, the Mass has been suppressed right now for the public. But you could do a spiritual communion that we've been asking over and over again. You know, that spiritual communion, Christ come into my life, set me on fire, let the Holy Spirit again hearken to my heart, into my mind, into my life uh, during this time. Help me, Lord, to live always in the light and in the truth. And for my family to be light and salt for them. Again, some of our parishes, I think many of our parishes are open in the Diocese of Gaylord or where you may be now living as you're watching uh, this streamed uh, Mass of Holy Thursday. Maybe they're having adoration. I know we're having adoration here. Um, and at least from 11 to 1 and from 6 to 8 in the evening. Hopefully you're taking advantage of that. And some are even offering confession as well. Adoration. It's a continuation of the Mass. We adore our Lord in his body and blood, soul and divinity. That his words, we believe, this ordinary bread and this ordinary wine, that the priest, with words of institution, is consecrated in his body and blood, soul and divinity. And so, maybe taking time to come, if there's no adoration, if the doors are open, walk in. Again, and just sit down and be quiet, settle yourself. Just say, Lord, come into my life. I'm a sinner. I need and I want redemption. I want you in my life. And I want that spiritual communion in my life. You're giving yourself to me that I might become another Christ, another Christos to the world, to the world. So be still and silent. I think that is Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and silent and know that I am God. So there will be no washing of feet. There will be no procession afterwards to some you know, location that we would be doing adoration at this time. Do it at home. As I mentioned, maybe wash each other's feet tonight before you go to bed. And tell that person how much you love them, how much they mean to you. As Jesus said to his apostles, he loved them to the end. And on the cross, he will show that and a very sacrificial love, how much he has loved us. And for us to do the same. Do this in remembrance of me. All the way to the cross, we are called to empty ourselves. And by golly, that probably for some of us will take a lifetime. And remember, it's not over until the hearse picks you up. And so until the hearse picks us up, we are still living and being and breathing be his disciples. Whether we function in any kind of way in this world, we are still be. So be not afraid. Be that disciple. And as Christ washed the feet of his disciples from the cross, he will wash our entire body, our entire selves, body and soul with his blood. 
Let us now come to the altar, Lord. Let us feed upon Christ's body, blood, and soul, and divinity as we enter into this great celebration, the outpouring of God's grace to his church, as he tells in Mark's gospel, I will be with you to the very end of the ages. And how has Christ been with us to the end of the ages? Through the Eucharist, his body and blood, soul and divinity, that we as a Catholic community have been celebrating for 2,000 years now. This sacred mystery. God bless you all. Let us now rise and bring our prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings to the altar of the Lord. We pray for our families and friends. We pray, Lord, for all those who have lost their jobs, for those right now who find themselves anxious with many anxieties within their household. We pray for peace for you, for your household, that you come together as a family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all our various government leaders around the world, in our own country, in our state, and here locally as well in Harper Springs and in the Emmett County. We pray, Lord, for their leadership and guidance during this time of crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all of our doctors, nurses, those in the medical research, all those police officers, fire people, uh, the medics, we pray, Lord, for their protection, that you might watch over them, you might inspire them as they continue their research uh, for a cure, not only for this virus, but for many viruses and diseases. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our media and our multimedia. May they speak and share the truth with us through words, uh, through print, and through pictures, uh, that they're not trying to fan the hysteria, but to bring peace and a sense of hope and inspiration as we are all sheltering down in our homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those in various service jobs as truck drivers, as those working at various restaurants and takeouts, uh, for grocery stores, uh, for pharmacies, for all places, dear Lord, that people who do service work for us. May you watch over them during this time of the virus, that they might be protected. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the Diocese of Gaylord, for our Bishop, Reka, uh, for our new Bishop, not yet mentioned yet, as we're waiting for that announcement. We pray for all of our priests on this Holy Thursday for their priesthood, our love for the priesthood, that we might, might have more priests and seminarians uh, who might come forth uh, with possibly a call for our deacons, all those preparing to become deacons. Uh, Fred Hackle here, our acolyte. We pray, Lord, for all our catechists, all moms and dads who are the primary educators of their kids. May they teach, may they witness the Catholic Christian faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those women and children suffering domestic abuse and those offering shelter and protection for them as does our local safe home of the Women's Resource Center, our Tree of Life Ministry for April. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And we pray for all the victims in our state and around our country, around the world, who are the victims of this COVID-19 virus. We pray for their family and caregivers who are now mourning their loss. For those who are sick, may your healing hand be upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for ourselves on this Holy Tritium of the Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil. May we truly prepare ourselves well to welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords into our life as on Saturday we will renew our baptismal vows. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Jesus, gracious Lord, lift all these prayers, petitions the Father, send forth your spirit upon us. Lord, as we enter into this sacred mystery of your body and blood, soul and divinity, may we be cleaned in this Passover and prepare ourselves to receive you, Jesus, in your unique way on Easter Vigil. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we might participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacred sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of our everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy. most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For then we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you the eternal God, living and true, celebrating this most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory he, we venerate, expressed to the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul and Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogranus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mystery of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, 
To bless, acknowledge this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all on this day, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine mag majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellanus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I hope tomorrow you will join us for Good Friday service at 2 p.m. And on Saturday, the vigil will be at 9 p.m. May you have a blessed evening in this Passover and stay awake. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Amen. Heal our Savior's glorious body, which his virgin mother bore. Thank you.